Well, this is about as daylight as it's gonna get. I do have some footage from the other day, but the auto audio is crap. Uh, but it is Saturday, 21st, 22nd. Uh, last night I was up till four o'clock in the morning shelling the landowner's five acres. Had a whopping 67 bushel to the acre, let me tell you, because I took that load in this morning. And uh, well, then the sun came out and it got greasy. So here it is about dark and well, the ground's firming back up. If all goes to plan, you might not see it in this video. Uh, it's got about an acre, maybe an acre and a half, I don't know, of beans left. And my hope is I can get done with this corn and then uh, then do the beans at some time, you know, in the night while it's frozen. The good news is the relay's holding out for my uh, interior light, which also is the same for my heat, uh, which come to find out when it's eight degrees out, not very warm. On another side note, my drive belt's slipping for the uh, traction variator drive. Uh, it did that once when I got it. I had to adjust it. And looks like we're gonna need to adjust it again definitely before I do any road traveling. But this other little field is actually down this road and uh, kind of where you see that tree line where the sunset is, there's a road to the right that takes us back to that. It's uh, started ratcheting on me, so I'm assuming I got an ear in between the snap rolls. I don't know. Don't see one there. Don't see one there. Oh, I had a chain come off. Yep, it's up there. Yay. Well guys, got the chain undone, yada yada. Looking down here, I'm like, okay, let's uh, respring this thing. I got tools with me. Then I see that. That, uh, the strap, if anybody remembers us having problems, uh, the strap weld broke. So I don't know whether to just take this chain off and use the other four rows. I mean, that would mean that I'd still get to keep working. Because um, I don't think this thing comes off very easily. I had looked at it before and couldn't figure out how it came off. Like, like this piece might be part of the frame. I'd have to look at a parts manual, but it's definitely not going to work like that. So, tough luck. Uh... Guess we'll figure out what we're gonna do here in a second. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I guess that'll do for now. All right, it's decided. We are uh, doing it like NASCAR. One less at a time and all left-hand turns. But it seems to be going okay. And to be honest, I did pick up a few rows with that one uh, where I was still not finished opening up the field. And even with one gathering chain, it was doing, it was, you know, you couldn't really tell the difference uh, 
I still strip them and uh, you know it take you have to get three or four years in there before uh, they would go up to the auger but still I mean if I need it it's there there's a little bit of one gathering chain uh, operation for you you know it seems like it's working to me of the planter so I figured it out and I, like I did a couple rounds where you know one side I only took two rows one side I took three uh, this side I'm taking five but that'll get me all caught up and back with my planter tracks which is what you're actually supposed to do anyways in case anybody out there didn't know now uh, you're supposed to have the same number of rows on your uh, combine as you do your planter um, I do not because uh, I planted 30s and I couldn't find a 30 inch head. So I had to make one. And the only way to do that was to take a uh, four row wide and add a row. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna try to do maybe in the future is see if I can find another one of my International 455 corn planters and add a row to it because I did some rough measurements and I don't think there's anything I would have to do other than uh, the one added row would not have a fertilizer uh, tube going to it. So I'd have to figure out a Y or something for that that would probably plug up and not distribute the way it's supposed to anyways. But uh, yeah, I just cleaned up this side. Now I gotta go up here and take it that way and go back to the top. Luckily this is a long narrow field so I don't have a, uh, a whole lot of uh, travel time where I'm not going to be in corn. But that's doing nothing but burning fuel and ultimately uh, making you less money you know having to put more fuel in it. But you know we're getting it done one way or another. Uh, that's the goal. You know perseverance. Anybody that's watched me for a long time knows that uh, I have depression issues, just kidding, but not really. Um, and perseverance, though, is key. Even if you get down, you just gotta, you still gotta get it done, and you gotta get back out there. You know, you gotta get back on the horse when you fall off. All right, so we are full, and I mean like uh, full, full, to the point to where we may have spilled out the side on the last round. I don't think so. I won't look when I get back. Won't be able to see because it's dark anyways. But, hey, you know, you win some, you lose some. Everybody laughs about cat corn. I don't like cat corn. I don't want to, I don't want to spill it. So, but, making the long trek back to the truck now. Dumping and then uh, coming back for some more. Man, I tell you what. This stuff has got to be my highest yielding because uh, I've made like three rounds, which is three passes on two sides, and uh, I'm already almost full again. And I've actually got the uh, actually got the combine warmed up enough to uh, give me some heat, but it's going good. I mean, Jacob told me not to be scared to let her eat commented that on the, on the video um, and by golly man I mean even this one slow row unit uh, this, if I go the right speed it won't plug up it just pushes right through it so yeah I wish I had a, a, a mount for this camera I'm using my phone again so you guys can actually hear me but I gotta I gotta put it down so I can keep going here well, I just cab corned it. I guess we'll check the damage out when we uh, get up out of here. Well, the good news is I found uh, some extra storage. Yeah. I don't know how in the hell I'm going to get out of here uh, without spilling a bunch of this. 
maybe I guess I'll uh, push. See, I got some space over here. If I had my front shield on, this wouldn't have been a problem. But maybe the problem would have been worse if I had Cap Gorn with the front shield on like that back one. Yeah, and the part that sucks is, see how it's all the way up against the edge? I have no idea how long that's been going on. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't even want to go back and look. Yeah, so I brought my little 100 bushel wagon uh, basically to put those beans in. But I don't even know if I'm going to have room in the truck for the rest of this corn because there's still several passes to go. And I know there's 190 bushels on the, on the combine, at least. Um, or I'm going to say thereabouts. It's supposed to hold uh, 170. But from what I had uh, on a truck the other day that had two loads on it, uh, it definitely holds more than that. And this is the most I've ever had on it. So, uh... I guess we'll unload this and look at the truck and figure out uh, how many thousands of pounds overweight we're going to be next trip to the elevator. Alright, there it is. Last four rows of my very first corn crop. Won't know the yield for another week, you know, once we get it all to the elevator. I'm not even sure this is all going to fit in the truck, but, um, yeah, it's been fun. I do enjoy corn. I don't enjoy the part of having to find space and worrying about trucks. Sorry. Got a little bit of down stuff right here. Yeah, that's all she wrote. Now let's hope I uh, got enough battery gas to get back to the truck. 